Nicole Murphy is well known as a mother of five, reality star, entrepreneur, and a fitness enthusiast. But in 2019, we realized Nicole's dating history has been very interesting and extremely messy. To fully understand her story, let's go back to before she and Eddie began dating. He was just getting started as a stand-up comic when he met 16-year-old Robin Givens at a comedy spot in Manhattan. Robin told People magazine that Eddie, who was four years older than her, was her very first boyfriend. Things didn't work out and he moved on and got engaged to Lisa Ferguson, an Adelphi University student. At the time their relationship started, he had already earned the title of one of the youngest people to ever appear on Saturday Night Live, and so many opportunities were opening up for him. But it was his new life in the spotlight and Eddie's belief that Lisa just wanted him for his money that made him call off their engagement. He told People Magazine that after ending things, he became a very bitter man. The end of that relationship set the stage for how Eddie would begin treating the women in his life. He fathered a daughter with his ex-girlfriend Nicole Rader in 1987, and in December 1988, while awaiting the arrival of his second child with a woman named Paulette McNeely, Eddie met Nicole at the NAACP Image Awards. He told People Magazine that he turned to his accountant and said, her I would marry tomorrow without a prenuptial. He didn't actually follow through with his plans to put a ring on it so quickly. Nicole told People Magazine that they took their time getting to know each other. Eddie continued to date other beautiful women, but he told the magazine that he and Nicole were making progress behind the scenes. Within just a few months of meeting, Nicole got pregnant. His old hookup, Paulette McNeely, gave birth to his son in July, and Nicole gave birth to his third child, Bria, in November of 1989. At first, he was excited to start his life with the former supermodel, and he couldn't wait to celebrate Bria's first Christmas together. He told author Pierce O'Donnell, I wanted to have a kid with Nicole because I was in love with her. When you love someone, you want to be with them also, right? Well, it turns out Eddie has a different way of approaching his relationships. Just two months after Bria was born, he told a magazine that he was still with Nicole, but he considered himself to be a single man. He also said Nicole's pregnancy was unplanned, but since she was so, quote, sweet and cool, he told her to keep the baby. She wasn't cool enough to live with him, apparently. She and their daughter weren't even allowed to move into his New Jersey mansion called Bubble Hill, which was basically his party palace. It wasn't that he didn't have enough space. In fact, the home had 32 bedrooms. But Nicole and Bria were shipped off to Nicole's hometown of Sacramento, California. Life wasn't that bad for her in Sacramento. Eddie bought her a lakefront mansion and he would occasionally fly in to visit. When he would return to Jersey, People Magazine said he would jump right back into his bachelor lifestyle. Nicole was living it up too. She reportedly had a $100,000 a year income, in addition to the money Eddie gave her. She seemed to be content with their weird bi-coastal relationship, or she simply wasn't comfortable with speaking up. Eddie's mom told People Magazine, Nicole sits on the side and observes. Eddie also made it clear he had no intention of ever marrying her. He said he didn't want to run the risk of falling out of love and having to go through a divorce. By the time their daughter turned two, Eddie began shifting gears. He started to find the duties of fatherhood more fulfilling than anything else going on in his life. On Christmas Eve 1991, when Nicole and Bria were visiting his New Jersey home, he proposed with a huge rock and she said yes. In 1992, Nicole revealed she was pregnant with Eddie's fourth child. And although they were engaged, the comedian was dragging his feet on the way to the altar. During an interview with the New York Times, he proudly displayed a gold bracelet that had N and B charms on it for Nicole and Bria. But when it came time to discuss wedding plans, he played coy about a possible marriage. It didn't help that People Magazine also reported he was still spotted out and about with other women while he was engaged to Nicole. She gave birth to their son, Miles. They finally got married in front of 500 guests at Manhattan's Plaza Hotel. Four years later, their unconventional marriage took a strange turn. Eddie was driving his Toyota Land Cruiser in an area in West Hollywood that's known for sketchy activity. 
He drove past 20-year-old Adizone Zayuli and asked if she needed a ride. She hopped in and police pulled them over at 4.45 a.m. Adizone was booked for an outstanding charge and after questioning, Eddie was free to go home. So where was Nicole during all of this? She and their three children were in Sacramento visiting Nicole's mother. The Nutty Professor star told CNN he was just trying to be a good Samaritan by giving Adizone a ride home. He said that for years he would jump into his car at odd hours and drive all over the city and give thousands of dollars to women working on the streets. On that particular night, since his wife and kids were gone, he said he was wide awake and bored. So he decided to drive to a newsstand to get something to read, and that's when he encountered Adazone. However, no one really believed him, especially after Adazone told a conflicting story to the National Enquirer. She said that when Eddie drove up to her, he placed two $100 bills on her leg before they began discussing the terms of their agreement. Adazone wouldn't get a chance to continue spilling the details about their encounter. Almost a year to the date after the incident happened, she was found lying on the sidewalk outside her apartment building. She had apparently locked herself out of her fifth floor apartment and tried to swing from the roof to her window on a towel and missed. Well, that's the story that was told to the media and the investigation was closed. No one expected Nicole to stay with him after that incident, but she did. And things remained very quiet for the couple for years. Five kids later in August 2005, she decided to end things after 12 years of marriage. A few months after filing, she had reportedly moved on and was spotted hitting up every hotspot in town with a guy named Alan Daniels. She received $15 million from Eddie when their marriage came to an end. She was also given the Sacramento mansion Eddie bought her. She would later put it on the market for $6.5 million and purchased a huge nine-bedroom house in Calabasas. Her new fortune didn't last long though. When the news reported her $15 million settlement, she was contacted by Troy David Stratos, a man she had known since they were both teenagers. He promised he would help her increase her wealth by investing her money overseas. However, he had ulterior motives. He told her he knew of Middle Eastern royal families who were interested in purchasing her Sacramento mansion. And he convinced Nicole to lease luxury Rolls Royce and BMWs to make the property more enticing to buyers. Troy was then able to live in Nicole's house rent-free and use the vehicles as his own. In the end, she lost a total of $7 million, and Troy was sentenced to nearly 22 years behind bars. In 2007, HeyGossip.com reported she was spotted with Turks and Caicos premier Michael Misick at the opening of an Antigua hotel. Michael was married to actress Lisa Ray at the time. A source close to Nicole said Nicole is a good friend and she and Michael were both there for an event, but not together. Does that statement sound familiar? If not, keep watching. Nicole and former NFL player Michael Strahan reportedly started dating in 2007. In February 2009, he was convinced Nicole was creeping around with Universal Records exec Demetrius Spencer. And he was right. Using the excuse of business trips, Nicole and Demetrius allegedly flew out on exotic getaways to the Caribbean and Mexico. When she and Demetrius reportedly took her Range Rover into the dealership, Michael had allegedly placed a hidden device in her car to track her location. The New York Post reported he barged into the dealership yelling and screaming, ripped the tracking device off of her dashboard and stormed out of the place. Three months later, they flew out to the Bahamas where Michael proposed with a stunning canary yellow and white diamond ring. And just like her engagement to Eddie, Nicole and Michael weren't in a hurry to pick a wedding date. Their relationship was a mess most of the time, and a source told E! News that during the last two years of their romance, they were on again, off again. In July 2014, she told Michael she was going to Punta Cana with her girlfriends. However, the paparazzi caught her cuddling and locking lips with former basketball player Jim Jackson. Initially, a source told TMZ it was just a coincidence that Nicole and her good friend Jim just so happened to be at the same resort at the same time. Sound familiar? A second statement was released by Nicole herself, who told TMZ she and Michael were on a break when she hooked up with Jim. Next, it was Nicole's turn to be suspicious. 
When she thought Michael was dating another woman, she decided to end things once and for all by announcing their breakup in August 2014. On the exact same day, he was being inducted into the NFL Hall of Fame. As for the massive engagement ring he gave her, she told Wendy Williams she kept it because she deserved it. She continued dating Jim for a few more months before moving on to other prospects. In 2017, she was spotted leaving Amigos party in Houston with Odell Beckham Jr. And in April 2018, she was photographed on a lunch date with Akon's brother, Boo. In January 2019, she was spotted leaving a wine and cheese establishment in Beverly Hills at one o'clock in the morning. And guess who was leaving right around the same time? Carmelo Anthony. The Daily Mail published the photos. The website believed Nicole and Carmelo were there together, but they assumed they were trying to throw off the paparazzi by leaving at separate times. When Nicole was asked for a statement, her publicist said she and Carmelo just happened to be at the same place at the same time. Hmm, are you noticing a pattern here? Nicole quickly moved on once again, and just four months later, a blog stated she was allegedly responsible for Birdman and Tony Braxton calling off their engagement. Lisa Ray did her part by spreading the news about Nicole creeping with a taken man on her official Facebook page. In July 2019, Nicole was spotted making out with Lila Roshan's husband in Italy. At first, she claimed their interaction was friendly, and of course, she said they just so happened to be at the same place at the same time. Later, she apologized to Lila and her family and said she would never condone hooking up with a married man. Let us know your thoughts on Nicole's messy dating history. And thanks for watching Real Reality Gossip.